Hello. I, uh, yeah, yeah. that's your yeah. name. Squirrels got me. Big Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Cold and fun. That's good that you think of that of it because that's what deer hunting typically is, is cold and fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday morning I'm blasting up on the pass and I see these deer moving. And I'm like, ooh, there's some deer moving. All of a sudden I just see this person just head down, just hauling ass wearing shorts and a t-shirt with a pack on. And I'm like I'm like, is that hard? My dad always talks about floating through the woods like the autumn breeze. So so Robert's when you're the 275 pounds, I don't know how you do that, but the freightliner. It's just like a creeper. He's just kind of up in the corner watching what's going on down there. Yeah. You know? He's like, <laughs> you know, he's up there slapping it, pissing all over everything. Is it warm yet? <laughs> How did you know the name of the actor? That's right. I know. What did you say his name? Her Hervé Velichos. <laughs> <laughs> you know what Pertinier means? If you know what Pertinier means and you live in America, you're a redneck too. <laughs> Welcome to the Log Talk Podcast, brought to you by Pertnir Outdoors. All right. Wow, that was a great conversation. Uh, just wrapped up this week's podcast with uh, Mr. Charles Whitman, from, uh, or Charlie, as he likes to go by, from Howl for Wildlife. Uh, he's the, one of the founders, uh, co-founder there, and uh, that organization is doing some really awesome stuff. And... Uh, very, very new. You probably, uh, if you have been paying attention, if you're active on social media or listen to other podcasts, you probably heard or seen of the, uh, of what they're up to. But we, uh, in this discussion, we'll run through, you know, how they came to be, what they're doing, what they're trying to do. And, uh, man, it's awesome. You know, in a, in a time where it feels like there's so much, uh, negative and it feels like there's so much going the wrong way, uh, or pulling people apart. Uh, this is, solely focused on bringing us all together and having a collective voice on people that are passionate about, uh, our wildlife and making it better than it is today. And, uh, you know, not just making it better, but maintaining what we have and protecting it from those who would like to take it away. And, uh, it's just outstanding what they're doing. So hope you enjoy this discussion. I, I, I certainly did. I'm very excited about it. And, uh, hope you enjoy uh head over to their website howlforwildlife.org and uh get yourself signed up for their you know email notifications and create your account on their website and uh and you'll be able to get involved and um you know start uh howling your voice to uh support um these uh positive and uh and these these bills and legislation or or uh whatever they are that are out there um that he's keying in on that we need to all get involved and share a voice on uh he is putting those in an easy easy to access place so we can do it so go check it out uh you'll learn the rest here in this discussion uh let's run through the old housekeeping items quickly uh yeah right so last night i want to just highlight quick last night i went to uh, down to Wellsville and went to uh, the second uh, edition of the uh, NDA chapter, the Upper Genesee chapter. Um, Sean down there put together an awesome event, uh, another great one. I was not able to make the first, but I was able to make it last night. And they had uh, had a presenter come in, and uh, Kristen Schuler, I believe was her name, Dr. Kristen Schuler uh, from Cornell University, who is uh, one of the leading researchers in CWD. Uh, so that was a fascinating discussion, a lot of thoughts uh, around that. Uh, I talked with her afterwards and hope to connect. She's from the, uh, she lives in the Auburn area. Uh, so I'm going to try to connect with her at some point here in the next uh, few months, uh, if not sooner, to try to get on here and talk with her um, a little bit more in depth and more kind of nuanced uh, and not necessarily just going by a, a PowerPoint presentation because obviously she had a time limit and and uh, had a, a room full of people. So I, I'm really interested to talk with her and make a connection to have a, a person that we can lean on here with the podcast to get some some great information coming right from the most knowledgeable source here in New York State. So very excited about that. Appreciate Sean bringing her in. And then we had a, a nice uh, timber management presentation given after that. Uh, which I thought was fascinating with all the stuff that we've been uh, 
that myself and Dallas and Brian uh, have been working on together at the farm. It's really cool. I've, I'm just eating up all this timber management discussion. So really enjoyed that talk and uh, a lot of things that we're going to try to put to work there. So um, kudos to Sean for, for organizing that. They're, they're going to have another one in April. Um, and then they've got their archery shoot coming up uh, May 21st, I believe is the date. Um, down in Wellsville again. So if you're from Western New York uh, or Northern Pennsylvania, uh, anywhere within you know a couple hours drive, I'd recommend it. We went last year, Danny and I did, and had a blast and just an awesome event. Uh, you know, kind of that banquet style, but they did an archery shoot in the morning and uh, had a bunch of prizes. Had fishing there, family friendly. You know, your kids can come. There's stuff for them to do. Um, just awesome and, and just good people, and it's just great to be around positive individuals that are you know wanting to make make things better around us uh and everybody's kind of coming together putting everything aside and just going out there and having a good time so go down uh and put that on your calendar uh may 21st and uh check that out um so that's that on that i was bummed to uh last saturday was registration for tech and uh i was slow on the trigger and did not get signed up in time so Unfortunately, will not be going to TAC in Pennsylvania this year, uh, probably for the better uh, for my liver and also for my shooting. Uh, last year was a disaster for me and uh, probably for the better. I'm going to miss my time with the with the boys, though, and with all the, the friends that we've made, uh, especially the guys from Antler Up, Jeremy and Dimitri and, uh, and Timmy Tom and Jim, all those guys. I'm going to miss seeing them. Uh, this uh, first weekend of June, but um, if you're going, I hope you have a great time and uh, don't lose too many arrows. Um, let's see, Shed Fest is going along well. We uh, we've got about a almost a little over a month, basically a month until uh, we're going to have our party at Windy Brew on April 9th, uh, twelve to four, to kind of conclude uh, Shed Fest, and we'll do our drawings of the prizes live there that day. Um, you do not need to be in attendance to win. Uh, but we are going to have a little party there. We'll have some raffles. Uh, Russ, I talked to him uh, this week. He's going to have some food specials that day, uh, probably like a pizza and a couple pint uh, deal or something like that. Uh, so we'll have some good food for everybody and uh, kind of a midday deal. So hopefully we won't chop up your Saturday too bad, uh, but we'll have a good time there and we'll have some raffles and uh, any of the money raised will will be going directly back to uh, the upper Genesee branch since, uh, Sean and I've been working together on a bunch of stuff. So we're, we're putting our funds directly to that, um, to keep that money local, uh, which I'm passionate about keeping it local with the local chapters to help them with, uh, with whatever it is that they're doing. Um, so that, that's, I hope we'll see you there. I hope, uh, hope if you're listening to this, you'll, you'll be interested in checking out Shed Fest. Um, 10,000 foot level Shed Fest is just, trying to get people involved, get out and do some shed hunting, have some fun. You don't have to shed hunt to be in shed fest. Uh, if you just want the t-shirt and you'd like to enter in the raffle and you'd like, uh, the one year membership to the deer association, that's what you get with entering. So the way you enter is go to pertinyeroutdoors.com, uh, go to the shop and select a t-shirt. Uh, and you can, you can pick the shirt, pick your size and then pick whether you want it. And if you're local here, you can do a local pickup or you can have it shipped and, uh, you do that, you set it up, and as soon as you purchase your shirt, you're entered in the raffle. And uh, so far, we are about halfway to the entry numbers that I'd like, that I had a goal for. Um, so, you know, if you have not signed up, please do. I've got some boxes of shirts here that I need to get out the door. Um, they are great shirts. I've had some gr awesome feedback. People say they're very comfortable. I'm currently wearing mine. I'm proud of it, uh, but of course I am because... I helped uh, put it together, so it would be bad if I didn't like it. Um, but, yeah, so I would really appreciate it if you head over to the website and uh, check that out, and, uh, you know, get, you'll get your membership of the Deer Association, you'll get entered in the raffle, and you will get a T-shirt. So pretty damn good deal for 30 bucks plus shipping, and uh, we appreciate your support there. And uh, don't be scared away by the whole shed hunting thing. If you're scared to shed hunt, don't shed hunt. You know, like Big Jim. Like Big Jim, I don't know, like – I think he's scared to shed hunt because he doesn't really find any sheds. So that's just a shot over the bow at you, Big Jim, if you even listen to the podcast anymore. I don't know. I mean, you just don't even engage anymore. Anyway, uh, 
there's always more to talk about. I've, I've, uh, but I'm not going to do it because it's already eight and a half minutes in and I'm going to cut it there. But, uh, you can tell, listen to this episode. I'm all fired up. There's a lot of things that got me all fired up. There's a time and a place to discuss them. And today is not the time or the place. So I will leave it there, but, uh, look forward to the next podcast, the next discussion. And, uh, if you could do me a favor and share this one out, uh, I think this is one that we all need to get out there. This is something that everybody needs to be thinking about and, uh, let her rip, you know, help me get this out there. Podcast is growing. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm looking at the numbers and, uh, we're edging up every month, every, every week we get a little more here, a little more there. So let's keep her growing. I appreciate you all. Hope you get outside and enjoy the nice hot winter weekend we got coming up and, uh, Find those sheds. Sign up for Shed Fest. Find those sheds. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. Keep feeding them. Can you hear me, Charles? Yeah, I can hear you now. Perfect. Yeah, for whatever reason, it doesn't let me, doesn't let us talk until we go, quote unquote, live. But, um, oh, got it. Yeah. So we're in private mode. It's just you and I shooting the breeze. So here, let me turn this up a little bit here. I think that might be. All right. Go ahead. Is that better? You hear me better? Yeah. Okay. I just didn't have it turned up. No problem. That sounds good. Let me make sure I'm on the... Yeah, okay. Yeah. I just want to see if I'm on the the fastest internet, but I am. Your five, your 5G. It's, um, no, it's, it's, it's gig speed or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, Comcast or, yeah. Yeah, we've got Spectrum over here in the east. So where, whereabouts are you? Um... San Francisco Bay Area. Okay. Just south of San Francisco. Okay. A a little surf town called Pacifica. Pacifica. Like the beer? Pacifica beer? Kind of Pacifico. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's Pacifico. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we're, so we're based out of uh, Western New York here. So we're New York state, but we're on, we're about as far away from the city as you can get uh, as far as where we are geographically. I'm just outside of Buffalo. So. That's where okay. we live. Nice. Yeah. So I grew up in Michigan. Oh, did you really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For uh, I lived there for twenty some years. So whereabouts? Did uh, Newport, Michigan? It's it's southeast Michigan. I grew up right basically on Lake Erie. Nice. So the other end of the we we were on the opposite end of the lake from each other. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. That's cool. Have, so you are on Lake Erie. I'm there. not on the lake. I'm about thirty minutes. Uh, yeah. If you're in a car, forty five. If you're towing a boat. Um, so it's that close. Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty crazy. quick. Yeah, we basically just jump on. We call it. Uh, well, it is called. It's uh, four hundred. It's the expressway that basically takes you from the south towns out in the country, straight up into the city. But you can, you know, I can be to the four hundred in ten minutes, ten fifteen minutes, and then you're, you know, you're a twenty five minute drive and you're at the lake. So it's pretty. Uh, Got it. It's pretty awesome. We're in the middle of nowhere, but you can be, you know, on one of the best fishing bodies of water yep. and in like no time so it's pretty cool yeah that's awesome this uh this white tail right there is actually from right where like down the street <laughs> in in <laughs> in michigan in michigan that's a dandy yeah it's, it's um there's a public land uh marshland um right where i grew up and uh, my my dad that's my dad's buck that's the biggest white tail he got but he hunted that he hunted that whitetail for a number of years, and he finally, finally got it one November morning. One, I think it was morning. Majestic November day. Yeah, he canoed. He canoed in, canoed it out. Super cool. What year was it? Like back in the seventies, like eighties? Oh, in the nineties? No, it was ninety uh, one. So it's pretty much the 80s. Yeah, you can call that the 80s if you want. It's not pretty. It's close. not deep into yeah. the 90s. No, the internet wasn't no, was... even really a thing at that point. Definitely, it wasn't, was it? No, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, certainly wasn't what it is today, or even close yeah. to it. I certainly was not on the internet. I didn't have a computer until you know, of, of my own until uh, I don't know 2000 something. I think I was borrowed computers or go to libraries or however it was before yeah, <laughs> i would have so to, funny to think of now it, you, know, you can't long ago oh it's and it dovetails right into what you guys are doing i mean things have changed 
so much in how we communicate and how we interact, you know, it's evolved and it seems like it's just exponentially changed uh, over yep. the last, you know, five to 10 years. You know, it's like, how do you do anything without a computer or a cell phone at this point? Yeah. You know, you your internet goes down at work or your house or whatever. It's like, well, I might as well just go cut the grass because there's nothing I can do without my computer. It's what it's, it's what it's come to, yeah. you know, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, yep. So just introduce you real quick. So you're Charles Whitman. Uh, what is your, I get you're with Howl for wildlife, but what's your role there? Mm-hmm. I know you guys, um, I'm, I'm the founder, president and founder. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, and I've, I've listened to a few podcasts that you've been on. Um, first hit my radar. I, I don't know. I think I'd heard of Howl for Wildlife before uh, you were on the Kafaro cast. Um, but then when I think you guys were on Kafaro cast, was it maybe a month and a half right after it was probably was January? Is that January or early February? Yeah, I mean, we, we launched January 11th and we were on Kafaro cast um, maybe the next week, mm-hmm. I think. And it's probably been wide open <laughs> ever since, huh? Yeah. I honestly, I've, I need to go back and I feel kind of bad because I've done so many podcasts and I haven't shared them or anything. Cause I'm like, I've seriously, I'm doing like three, four podcasts a day sometimes. Oh shit. And I can't, and I just say yes to them all. I don't care like how big or small they are. You know, a lot of these guys, <clears throat> I, listen, I just, you know, there's certain things I pay attention to and there's certain things I don't. I had, I re- I'd heard of the hunting public. <laughs> you had no idea. I had no idea. I was yeah. on their podcast. And I'm like, "Holy cow! These guys. This is a big podcast." I, had, oh, I didn't I, know. Yeah, they're one of the largest plat- platforms in the outdoors <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm super appreciative of of those guys for reaching out. I just, you know, I don't know everybody, and I'm busy. So, yeah, I don't know what the heck's going on with with everybody. So I just say, I'm like, "Hey, man, if you want to help out." It helps us for sure. I don't care who it is. So, and it's, I'm it's I'm encouraged. Absolutely to, insane. I'm really encouraged to hear. You know that's guys. You know, obviously, Aaron, Aaron, and and the guys from Kafaru are very outspoken about you know wildlife things and and those sorts of topics. So they've been they haven't been shy about that. But I'm excited to hear you know that groups like the hunting public are you know wanting to reach out and engage with someone like yourself who is you know, your organization is focused on the politics of hunting and uh, mm-hmm. coming at this with a different direction. And I think, you know, it's, it's encouraging to me to see some of those larger groups engaging in these discussions because it's important because people are watching and consuming all of our content, whether it's, you know, mine, which is a smaller platform, or you go to somebody like the hunting public, they're reaching hundreds of thousands, if not touching millions of people. So, you know, though they have dramatic impact on getting the message out on what's like, what's going on legislatively yeah. and and uh so what's your what's your background what got you into uh into even wanting to do this are you a political person is it something that you know you have experience with or how did you even get into doing this <laughs> um no you know i mean personally i, I like debating i'm i'm a bit of an instigator <laughs> um like i've just always been that way you know, I appreciate a good debate. It's like nothing personal. I just like the act of debating. Mm-hmm. I think it's a great way to get ideas out and, and just, it's tough. It's tough for people because it's hard to not take it personally or whatnot. Right. So, I mean, I guess personally, that's how I am. You know, I was involved with, um, this will probably get me in trouble. Whatever. I was involved with Ron Paul's campaign. Okay. Like, 20 for his 2012 presidential election, but just, just like, yeah, grassroots doing some stuff here in California. I can't even, um, making calls and whatever I could do anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've always had, I guess, a leaning towards it, but I, I can't stand politics. Like I don't watch the news. I really don't. I avoid it at all costs because I think it's just depressing. Mm Mm-hmm. I can just, the, you know, if there is, if there isn't something that I feel like I can do, I do whatever it is I feel like I can do that's going to make an impact. But listening to talking heads on the TV and just like having that be pounded into my head, there, that's not going to do me any good. Like I have my values and I have 
my beliefs and um, that's the way I'm going to live my life. And I think that's the best thing everybody can do because yeah. you'll actually have the biggest effect if you're true to that on yourself and everybody around you. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, as far as hunting, I've, I've hunted all my life. I've, um, I've hunted all over the place. I am a licensed guide. So I do that when I, when I have time, um, I own a corporate events business. Um, I first got involved, unfortunately, I guess I first got involved in a bill. It was a California bill in 2018. It had to do with, um, with wild pigs. And there was a, I read through the bill Actually, a reporter called me to ask my opinion on this wild pig bill. And so I think he might have brought it. I'm trying to remember. I think he might have brought up a certain paragraph. He's like, what do you think about this paragraph in this bill? And because the bill looked good, but there was a paragraph in there that was going to shut down some some businesses in California that were essentially high fenced exotic hunts that actually had nothing to do with wild pigs. Hmm. And I knew of some of these businesses and I know what they do. And I was like, well, why does this matter? This is, this is like those exotic animals are actually classified as livestock. They are not a game animal. Fish and wildlife in California does not have anything to do with them. It's literally livestock. It's USDA. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I was like, why is there a wildlife bill with that inserted into it? That's, that's really odd. And then I come to find out that that paragraph was inserted like because of deals made or whatever else. I hate how this works, but yeah. <laughs> there's politics and everything, but deals made where, and I can't remember if it was the humane society or whatever, but it was an anti hunting organization that had said, we will, you know, we're going to remain neutral on the bill because we're against all hunting, but we will not be against it if we can, put that in there which will shut down these high fenced exotic hunts now let me just be clear i don't care if that's your thing or not but i know personally one of them's it's like a thousand acres mm -hmm. fenced in so it's not exactly a pen but they are exotics there and there's they have a hunting school there um tons of people who have no access to hunting or don't know anything about hunting, but they're like, you know, um, I'll go there because, you know, it's, it's a, it's an environment where everything's hands on and there's, there's instructors there and whatnot and they call it hunt school. Yeah. So they teach you how to shoot. They teach you, um, you know, point of impact, you know, what you're aiming at on a, on a, on an animal. They teach you how to butcher it. And to me, I'm like, well, that sounds like, adventures and grocery shopping. I mean, what's the difference between going to the grocery store and buying meat? Well, there is a difference. That's a lot cooler. If you want to go get your meat and do that, yeah. if you want to call it hunting or whatever, I don't care. Yeah. But you and I, you be. and I can make that, we can make that, we can see the difference in that or the, you know, the right or wrong, or it, it, I shouldn't even say wrong. I don't see wrong in that. That's, that's people making their choice. Some people want to go to the grocery store. Some people want to go procure it themselves or pay to procure it, you know? Yeah. So beyond that, I know a lot of elderly um, hunters or people who used to hunt and, not, and they can't, they just can't get out, but they'll, they'll go out and they'll go there. And then there's a huge amount of um, disabled vets that go there. And I'm just like, dude, this doesn't need to be in there. And <clears throat> what was crazy about it is that it was supported by a ton of hunting orgs or RGs, the bill. And they had no idea that that was in there. Mm -hmm. Zero clue. Um, so once that got out and they were, they were like, oh, crap. Well, that changed quickly. But it's, it told me, I'm like, how nobody's, <clears throat> nobody's really paying attention. It's like, it's like, you know, some orgs or whatnot. It, it, it told me, I'm like, maybe they're just too big. Like, there isn't enough focus on, on the, on the, on the details, which are really, really important. And that bill would have passed. I'm, I'm sure. So I got pretty passionate about that one just because 
I guess it was something I found, you know, and then, uh, something I found and, and I felt like I could make a difference and that, that bill got killed. Um, and then last year at the beginning of 2021, yeah, uh, there was a, a Senate bill introduced to the Senate in early January in California to ban all bear hunting. And it was just an outright humane society sponsored bill that was ludicrous. It was all about trophy hunting and killing cubs and killing um, sows with cubs and everything that's already illegal. Yeah. And, but that was their, that was their persuasion. We got to stop these hunters because they're doing this. It's like, all right, well, this is complete deceit. So I started a, I called my friend John Stallone, who is a, a partner with me with how, how for a while. So if you listen to Kafaru cast, yep. um, he was, uh, he was on there with me. Um, and he, he suggested change.org. And I'm like, really? Like the, <laughs> the, where people have petitions, you know, like that works. Yeah. I don't know, but you know, nobody else was doing anything. So I'm like, okay. So, uh, started a change.org petition and had it going to all of the decision makers, which was kind of a big, later on I figured out how important that was. So it wasn't contact your legislator. It was who is, who are the sponsors of this bill and who's going to make the decisions of this bill. And I think it was a committee at the time. So I had that change.org petition going to those specific people, which also meant anybody could get involved in any state. Right. And I just, we just started like on, on Instagram and Facebook talking about it, posting the petition, telling people like we had just a process, like make, make this petition, your, um, your Instagram pro- profile. And then it got, I mean, in five days, it got all the way up to meat eater and they were posting it. And it just became this giant thing where hunters, just individuals got wildly involved in it. And they were making calls to the Senator's office. And, and we, we had like these zoom training meetings and stuff like, listen, don't call them and yell at them. Don't be, don't be like, <laughs> right. why the F you blah, blah, blah. Like make conduct yourself, conduct yourself yeah. and make good points. And that's it. That's all you got to say. And so 27,000 people, um, emailed the decision makers in five days and it just, the bill was poorly written. Um, and the bill got pulled like on day six or something. So to me, that told me, um, how do I say this? It, that had never happened before. Right. And I asked myself, (laughs) this wasn't that hard. Mm -hmm. Like, the base, it seems like they want to be engaged. It seems like they want something to do. Right. Yeah. So is that not available to them? Like it, I really, like I see action centers set up. I see alerts. I see orgs getting people involved or at least attempting to. Right. So I started digging into it and I'm like, Hmm, it's not, it's not really that easy. It takes, And this is, it takes time. And this is kind of, you know, I don't know however you feel about this, but people are, they're not going to take a lot of time to do something. They're just not. That's the reality of the situation, right? And, And there's a lot of good reasons why as well. There's, for me, for instance, I mean, this is a good, this is a good point. I've hunted all of my life, but if you ask me certain questions about, management and conservation. I have no idea. That's not what you do. Yeah. That's not what I do. Yeah. And it's still, I'm still that way. Like, yeah, I'm involved and I'm learning right with everybody. I've just provided an easy button. So when these issues come up, yeah. Um, here's all the content about the bill. So you can read all that. We'll try and make that also summarize that as easy as possible. And then with a click of a button, you can reach, the decision makers at whatever at whatever point that bill is at because it moves through committees and whatnot our program will change to reach those decision makers so it can be you can start with step one and it's at this committee and 
go to step two and it's at another committee and step three, it's at, you know, the full house of a state or whatever. So when you click that button, it's going to the people who matter and you can do that from any state that you're in. You don't have to be in that state. You don't have to be in that district. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've, we've gone around that by, um, well, I won't get into that, but that's what we've got. That's, that was a part of, I was like, this is what I need to figure out is how to go around that and, and, and let everybody reach anybody. Um, because number one, and I know this now from, from the last few weeks, speaking with representatives and commissioners and whatnot from, from the other States, they have told me, they said, we have been waiting for this to happen from the hunting community. Everybody else does this, right? Yes. The anti-hunting organizations do this. What, like when something comes up, they are banging on our doors and they are filling our email boxes up. And a lot of times the loudest voice is just who wins. Squeaky wheel gets a grease. And man. I'm it's, like, okay, yeah. well, uh, why aren't we doing this? You, you know, so that, so that was my, so that was my goal was to figure that out and figure out how to make it super easy. Um, and then also not making it cookie cutter. So how do I not make it a form letter? How do I make it? So if we have a thousand people take action and it goes to 22 different decision makers, that's, that's 22,000 actions, mm -hmm. right? So it's like a force multiplier, but how do I make it? So the emails aren't all the same. How do I make it? So it looks different. And we've also done that. And so that we're building, we're, 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 we're building on, it just takes time, but you know, I want to make it as personalized as possible. And it comes from you. It does not come from us at all. It just sort of routes through us. Yeah but it completely comes from your email address and goes to those individual people. Um, but we have the capability of making as many of those emails, a, a different subject line or a different body of content. And additionally, you can add to it. You can edit it. You can write what your thoughts are in there. Correct. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's the best way. And in it's, um, and it's working. I mean, you're, not from everybody, but people are getting responses back directly in relation to what it is that, that they sent in. Mm -hmm. It's not just like, I mean, sometimes it's like, thanks for contacting us. We'll try and blah, blah, blah. But many times it's thank you for writing me about this specific bill. Here is my opinion on this bill. And I appreciate, you know what I mean? Like they're, yeah, they actually looked at it. Yeah. Right. And the, the amount of people that are saying, man, I've been sending emails for years. I'd never get replies back. <laughs> and this is, you know, we're building a relationship with them and, and they aren't, the, the emails are, are, they make sense. They're making good points, whether they agree with it or not. Right. But yeah. they're making a good point and it, and it gets them to think, Hmm, you know, maybe I don't want to go this far on this bill. Maybe there's something in there I didn't think about before. And that's been said before too. That was, that was said at, I was at a hearing in, in Colorado and, and that was brought up about the content of the emails. And, um, it, it was something about the you know, wildlife management or the North American model of wildlife, um, conservation. And, um, uh, the, the Senator was like, you know, it was really intriguing and, there was a lot in there for me to learn about right. and things I wasn't aware of. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just too easy. At the end of the I day, mean, these representatives are, are normal people and some of them are not, Yeah, they're not experts on everything. So, you know, mm -hmm. they get this bill in front of them and they look at it and say, well, yeah, it seems like this is a bad idea. Maybe I should vote against this. But if they're not hearing and being educated on it, like a lot of the stuff is, kind of obscure topics like people aren't paying attention to predator hunting like like oh right you know pooh bear like that's that's what they think about bears most people don't mm -hmm. have that experience um yeah and and i and i can understand predator hunting is what always that's that's usually that's the first attack point it seems that's the first attack point for sure and i can understand if you don't know any better at all and i 
I probably used to think this way because I, I know I had no interest in bear hunting or coyote hunting in, in a certain, I wasn't against it. I just had no interest. I was like, I don't, I don't have any interest in doing that. I don't get it. And, um, so, I mean, that's, that's changed now for funny reasons. It's changed for me personally, but, um, but if somebody, if you didn't know any better and somebody comes to you and says, you know, why are we hunting bears and predators and, you know, wolves or coyotes or whatnot, you know, we want to get rid of that, you know, and, and then you show them a couple pictures of, something that looks, you know, not, not a good representation or whatever, or just completely out of your element. You know what I mean? You just right. don't get it. You show them a, a clip of, of a moment in time of a hunting experience. Right. It's you know what no I mean? Context. You're not seeing the whole thing. Right. Yeah. And if, if somebody didn't understand, you know, amounts of habitat, lack of habitat, um, amounts of predators, if they aren't managed, um, the effect that that has on ungulates. If you don't take the time to get into that, which is what our challenge is, right? If you don't take that time to get into that and learn about that, yeah, you'll never understand. And and a part of what certainly we are trying to do, especially on the predator-based bills, is explain essentially. Listen, if you if we take away predator management you are actually hurting wildlife. Yeah. <laughs> You're actually, you don't see it because it's not mentioned, but this has a direct effect on, on deer and antelope and elk and turkey, everything else Yeah, on down the line. And here's why we think this. And here's a hundred years of data and science where management systems have been built upon and grown. They're not perfect, but you can see how things have improved, you know, there's always room for improvement. Yeah. But so here's why we are saying this, you know, so it's not just about, we're not just out there, you know, quote unquote trophy hunting. There's a reason why this is managed. Now, not every hunter out there is out there thinking, Oh, I'm doing this because I'm managing. Right. I'm a manager. I'm, I'm doing it for science. I, I don't know anybody that's, like that's the reason why you're going out <laughs> right. there. Yeah, that's no. not why you're going and buying your tag, but you are directly part of that process when you purchase your tag because the the state agency has decided this is how many tags we're giving out to manage our populations yeah. to do these things. So you are part of that process whether you realize it or not. And most people don't care to know that they're part of that. They just want to go get their tags and go do their thing because that's what they like to do. But for the millions of people in reality that there are that do care about that and do want to be part of the process. You know, it's like the platform that you've created. It is what we have needed because all of us belong. Like, I don't know about you, but I, one of the things that I've kind of griped about, not gripes, not the right word, but I've, I've spoken to the organizations that I belong to the deer association folks, the Turkey Federation, like to speaking with different people I know from there is that it seems like we're all focused, those organizations, they are focused on a single species, a single yeah. issue. So they don't, mm. and they don't want to, you know, because if you, if you lose focus on what you do, then you can't be the best in focus and do the best for what you are focused on. So if it's deer, if it's a deer association, they don't necessarily want to get tied up into predator management issues because that's not their core focus. I understand, that's like scope creep, or whatever you want to call it. You don't want to mm -hmm. do that. But it's important because if we all have those voices in those organizations, but what it does is it spreads everybody out. So we're not like one unified voice. So like you were, you know, starting back to the beginning of this conversation, you were saying, you know, you inherently are not, you know, you hate politics, but I'm sure you're just like me where you still pay attention to politics. Like you, I don't like politics, but it is something that I'm always watching because that is really telling you what direction things are going with the country, with your, what your job might look like in six months to a year with legislation and things like that. But mm -hmm. it seems like this time of year and the more that I'm paying attention to it, you know, this is the, you know, the legislative sessions kicked off at the beginning of the calendar year in, in January. And that's when all this stuff gets thrown out on the table and then they start working yeah. through the process. And as a, as just a regular citizen who's, you know, how do you pay attention? Like what are the bills that, 
actually will get traction that you do need to give input on. Because if you look at it, I mean, if you're doing this, if you go, like, I'm interested in how you're deciding what to even look at and, and put the energy towards. Because just in New York, I mean, there's, there's 30, 40 plus bills that are related to the shooting sports or hunting or fishing that some of them are, they're radical ideas. And it's like, oh my God, like, is that, does that have the possibility of something that could be changed? Because it yeah. could affect a lot of things. But, but many, yeah. many of those bills may be so far-fetched that they will never get a sponsor and they will never make it through the different houses to get mm-hmm. to the actual governor's desk or whatever it might be. But, yeah, I mean, you have to, what, you're, what you've done with this is you've kind of created that, for somebody like myself, you've created that easy button for me to pay attention, what are the key issues that you're finding that I can easily interact with and keep up with it and understand how those things are progressing that wasn't there mm-hmm. before. Like the deer association, something pops up here in New York. They do that. They send it out and say, Hey, here's the, the issues that we are in support of or against. And you can speak on that, but it's just that it's not the whole picture. So yeah, I'm curious to hear from you. Like, how did, how, how are you managing that? Like, how are you keeping track of what, <laughs> what needs to be at the top of the list? Um, it's just the, the issues that for the most part, I'd say it's twofold for me. Cause I'm, I'm creating most of the actions and, and writing most everything up still for me. It's just what, what's the loudest, you know? I mean, if it's a, if it's a big, you know, if it's like, you know, a banning of, of hunting something that rings a big bell for me right off the bat. Right. Mm-hmm. If it's a pro hunting bill that seems to make sense to me, um, that rings a big bell because I also want to get on that side is right. It's not, not all negative. Being, right. Not, a, not everything is a, is a four alarm fire and, ah, uh, you know, freak out. This guy's falling. There's, if, if the Humane Society can submit proper documentation to get a bill in, or we, we can do the same thing. So it's like, that's the other thing is we, we can, we just, uh, for whatever reason, it seems like we don't enough, yeah. you know, or maybe I just wasn't aware of it. Well, I think a lot of people in this that are hunters are kind of conservative based people that just, they don't want to see fast change. They don't want to put things out there. They kind of like it the way it is. Leave us alone. You know, like that's, right. that's kind yeah. of the, the way that most of yeah. us are. And that's a, yep. that's a bad, in a, in a lot of ways, because we aren't the people that are actively out there trying to change a lot of these things and putting a lot of these bills out there to ban or do whatever those, they, they are rabid about it and they want to see that change made. But a lot of us hunters mm-hmm. like that's never going to happen. Just, you know, I got to go work in the woods and do my thing. I, I could care less. And it's like, but it, you might not be able to do that if we don't step up and start voicing our opinions, which we all have, but we just don't seem to want to take the time to do it. Well, what also, ha- well, I'll answer the rest of your question. So the other part is if content is provided to me, um, so I consider it sort of sponsored content or whatnot. So if somebody, this is ultimately what I want, is kind of the boots on the ground people in each state. Mm-hmm. Like, listen, you can use our platform we can embed it on your website. We can, whatever it is you need to make you feel better. Um, we can put tracking codes in. So if there's donations based on this action, we can reroute a percentage of that back to your organization. Mm -hmm. Like I'm trying to work with everybody, but if you can provide, I have a template. I'm like, okay, you know, go to our action center. You'll see how the actions look, but basically I need an intro, which is what is the bill about? you know, a link to the bill, whatever. So people can just figure that out. And then who are the decision makers? And then keep me updated on that as that, as that progresses. Um, and then write me as many one to two paragraph emails as you can, because the more, the better, because that means when everybody comes to the site, there's more, um, personalized different emails it's less it's less form letter Mm -hmm. so then when we send out these emails they get way more opens because they're not the same same. subject line and the same thing you know whatever else they'll they'll eventually i mean they keep them all they put them in a folder and they're like oh we have you know six thousand here in this folder or whatever but if they look different they open them and we can see that as well 
mm-hmm. you know, on our end. We can see how many opens there are and how many get sent and all that stuff. So, you know, as long as it's, I don't, I don't want to get involved in bills that are kind of just infighting between <laughs> hunters. Yeah. Crossbow you know, stuff. Like that's, yeah. Yeah. That's not. We need to unite. My goal here is, unite is unity, here. not division. 100%. We yeah. can fight over all that stuff later. Right. At a different time, but that's not what our goal is here. Our goal here is first recognizing that um, the hunting industry is under attack and it's multifaceted and multi layered and it's coordinated. You see the same things happening in, in tons of states with almost the exact same wording. Mm-hmm. And then when you show up to these meetings, you find out, oh, wow, it's the same people involved. Same Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, then that's what we need to do. So that's the other reason why if you see something happening in in um, Arizona and you live in New York, you should get involved because that's going to be in New York if it's not already there. Yeah, It's just the battle is over there. And you can choose to fight it when it's way over there, or you can choose to fight it when it's at your doorstep, but it's still your battle. Yep. And that's the way like we want everybody to think. Um, that's exactly the tactics of anti-hunting organizations. Mm-hmm. Believe me. Well, it's, <laughs> we've, an, it's we've had, anti-hunting. We've had people in their meetings. We, we, uh, we've learned a lot from them. I bet. And I would be fascinated to be in one of those meetings too, because I, I think there's a lot of people that may may think that they align with those organizations, um, whether it be Humane Society or there's things about that the Humane Society posterizes that they believe in that I don't disagree with. You know, like yep. some of the factory farming and animal abuse, like, yeah, this shit's terrible. We shouldn't be doing that. We should try to make that better. But then it's this stuff that's just like this off the rails. And I see the same thing from the Sierra Club. Like they are, they are behind. It is unbelievable to me. And they're one of the largest grassroots organizations, if not the largest grassroots organization in this country, um, nonprofit, but they are behind everything. When you really start digging into these different small organizations, like, like, oh, here's the, here's the organization that supports them in the background. And it's like, oh, it's Sierra Club. You see these letters written to the editor and these different, you know, whether it's the paper or it's a magazine or whatever, typically somebody who's a, a chairperson for, you know, in, in, but those people, they, what I find, and this is kind of going off the rails, but what I find is a lot of times they don't necessarily, like they will not reply to you. They will not engage in the discussion, but they drop the, they drop the bomb and then they walk out. And a lot of people are just looking at that and saying, like, I don't agree with that or I, or I do agree with that. And then it, nothing gets pushed, but all they did was just seed that, like seed that doubt or seed that idea. And then they've done their part and they back away from it. And and I, I, what I truly believe is that a lot of people, and I think we're in this unique time right now where a lot of people are going to start, they are starting to question a lot of things going on around us. I mean, just look at the world we've lived in the last two years. And I think a lot of people are starting to say, well, does this organization really align with my, with what I, what I, my values are, what I think. And, and like people that have a, what they think are varying opinions from me or you, may not we're we're all wanting the same thing but we're we're just coming at it from two different directions and i think bringing people together coming this back around to howl and what you're trying to do with hunters like we don't have to be coming from different angles we all have the greater good in mind and we need to work together on this stuff and uh i mean i don't know what your thoughts are on that but that i just i, I get this feeling it and i i don't think that it's totally off base that we are going through this like reckoning right now where a lot of people are trying to figure out what the hell have I been told and taught and and explained about things that I'm am I really understanding what is going on or what the factors are driving things because it doesn't seem like a lot of stuff just seems kind of upside down you you could go down any hole and you could see some similarities in that stuff you know well for one thing I think we can get And I think we must, I think we must get, if we, if we want to, first of all, I want to run myself out of business. Okay. Yeah. Cause that means I have nothing else to fight. That's the goal. Yeah. Um, to get there, we need the non hunting public to also be on our side, not for them to be hunters. 
they can be, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, but for them to understand why hunting as a role is important for them to appreciate wildlife, for them to continue seeing healthy numbers and healthy habitat, right? That's what we need to do. We have the messaging for this. We have data and science for this. And I kind of keep saying this lately because it's, I, I learned so much just from talking to people, just listening to you, like things go off in my head. And that's mm-hmm. so I just like, I could just keep building and building and they're like, Oh, okay. I'm going to do this next. Like this is how it works. But um, PETA and Sierra club and HUSIS and all that, they advertise all kinds of different stuff to the mainstream. It doesn't mean the mainstream is on their side, but they're willing to put it out there and they're getting a few of them in. They're mm-hmm. bringing them in to their side. Now, is that because some of that is based on deceit? Some of that's misinformation. Some of that's, I don't know. And some of it's just like, oh yeah, I'm totally passionate about that. And absolutely. I'm a, full vegan and I'm against killing everything and blah, 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 blah. Even though, you know, a lot of things die if you're a vegan, (laughs) but they don't, they're not aware of that, but we can do the same thing. Like, are you kidding me? We, we have a century of data to rely on that just keeps getting better and better. Mm -hmm. And we have biologists and scientists and whatnot who this is their jobs, what they're doing, you know, so we can't throw that out there. We can't throw that hook out there and get some people in on our side, not yeah. for them to be hunters, but to be in support, to be in support of wildlife. Yeah. That's it. It's not in support of hunting per se. It's what actually protects wildlife. I'm not afraid to say, like, it seems weird. Like, Oh, what do you mean? You're protecting wildlife. Yeah. Protecting wildlife. That's what I think we're doing. We're, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and don't let the other side co-op that messaging Mm-mm. at all. It's the whole a part of the the irony and the comedy and the and the mm, just the kind of the the conflict, I guess, with the name Hall for Wildlife. It's totally on purpose to not blaringly state anything really. And to get hunters actually riled up yeah. about it. And it's, it's funny to me when I hear it, like, they're like, oh, it's a pro wolf organization. Or <laughs> right. And it's like, must be backed working. by the humane this society. Exactly what I wanted to <laughs> right. do. hundred percent what yeah. I wanted to do, but there's also reasons why I did it. So the other side, uh, it's, it's a strategy. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, there's social media strategy there. There's, there's a lot of reasons why that goes on, but howl for wildlife is just, you know, it's, there's obvious points to it. It's your voice. It's howling. It's a pack. So the idea of us, you know, being unified, all hunters and fishermen and sportsmen, like whatever kind of hunting you like, we have to have the same voice on fighting back here. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the howl. And, 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 and let's, and if we're a pack, we're stronger, right? You know, a, a wolf pack is the, is the, is the apex predator when they're a pack, you know, that's all that is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the messaging is just, it's, it's so funny. And I, I don't know, it's been, it, it's really, uh, I, I, I don't even know how to, it's just comedy to me. It's yeah. kind of funny how, well, that's, and it, how that's worked. And it's funny how the wolf has become has become the I you know almost more than the grizzly bear has become the the focal point of the anti hunting with the wolf <laughs> yeah. and and it's like you ask me wolves are incredible like i i'm i'm intrigued by wolves like everybody dreams of you know i'm in the in the in new york we don't i don't believe we have wolves they say we have koi wolves which is like a mix between a canadian wolf yeah. and a and a coyote whatever but yeah like we have coyotes on our landscape and there is nothing cooler than being in the woods and hearing a coyote or having a coyote come by. Like that's like, that's, that's as wild as it gets. Like having a coyote or a bear come by, like you are with a predator and that's a cool mm-hmm. experience. I don't want to see wolves wiped off the face of the earth. You don't want to see it. There might be some ranchers that have ideas because of it's hurting their pocketbooks, 
But yeah. But a lot of these problems, they end up being problems because they aren't allowing us to manage, be part of that management of that population. And if you let them run wild and you let them, they will, as long as there's food to eat, they will kill and they will, their herds will grow or their packs will grow. And that's the thing. But if we don't allow ourselves to be part of that process, then, then people will go rogue and you will have, you know, I've read books, I've heard stories, ranchers, you know, doing what they have to do with mountain lions and, and that's awful. But they're they're trying to make a living too, and this is a point yeah. that I've made in discussions. And it seems like the winter time is the time that I get riled up about this stuff, and that we have these discussions. But I don't know if it's because I'm trapped inside or what the deal is. But I think it's just the time of year. This is when a lot of these discussions happen. Is you know we as people have changed the environment, whether we want to accept the reality of that or not, and we have to understand that we can't just throw our hands in the air and say, well, you know, we want to leave it is you know forever wild and we're not going to do anything because we want it to be the way it was what's well, like it can't like look at look at parts i don't know cal uh, california very well but i know colorado very well from the time i've spent out there that state is changing like rapidly i mean you go in the mountains it is not i mean i've seen just the the vale and the the silver thorn you know those valleys i mean it's unbelievable the amount of people in those areas now mm-hmm. We have changed the landscape. We have we have made an impact, and we mm-hmm. are and we have to understand that. And if you go and you know release wolves and knowingly that you're not going to be able to do anything to manage that population, yeah. And like in that vote, you know that whole thing is it kind of comes around to this. It's like you make it a popular vote, and you know that the that it's a it's a popular thing. Where you're going to vote that you don't want wolves back where they originally were. Well, like, yeah, that, that'd be great, but are we going to be able to manage them, or are we going? Well, I think they even the wolves that they brought in were Canadian wolves, anyways. They weren't <laughs> even wolves that were in Colorado, right? Am I right no, on that? No, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not like. I don't want to be an people expert. People keep on asking that, me about right. that. I'm like, man, I'm definitely not a wolf expert here, and 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 in California, they, you know, I guess some have wandered in. And that um, will naturally happen, right? You know, as California. the packs grow, they will yeah. split off, and that that happens. You know, yeah. we, we've seen that happen here in New York with bears. I mean, you go back to my ch- early childhood, there was no bears in Western right. New York. Now we have open seasons. There's thousands of bears shot every year in New York. Like, it's a booming population. But because mm-hmm. they, they grew, they spread, they had a good population, they had Rondex and then the Catskills, and they they wander. You know, you get those young male bears, and they wander off, and then families start, and, you know, things grow. But – we're part of that process, and I guess that's the point I was making there. Is like we have, we have yes. changed the environment, and we cannot think that we can't be active participants in maintaining that or trying to make it better. Because well, us being we a part of the process, I think, is like <clears throat> that's the big conversation. That's like the the philosophical conversation. That's the that's the reality of the situation. Is that many people there seems to be like this disconnect. We'll talk about predators and animals and nature. And then we act like humans just arrived one day from a different planet and we're invading and, you know, whatever. I I don't, it, that's the way it's like put to me. I'm like, well, hold on a second. Like, aren't we a part of nature? (laughs) Like there's, certainly a ton of people that think we came from we were monkeys or we were a you know whatever you know what i mean so like how are we not a part of this then right whatever your belief is how are we not a part of this are we not a predator you know like of course we are right i mean we wouldn't we wouldn't be here we're at the top of the food chain yeah yeah but what sets us apart so we're not just we're not just out there running rampant and killing everything, you know? And that's what a lot of animals will do. A lot of predator, predator animals will, will, will certainly do that. Um, but they're not thinking management. They're just thinking, I got to fill my stomach. But if there's a bunch of them out there thinking that I got to fill my stomach and there's too many of them out there, I got to fill my stomach. That might be a problem. They're just out there like on a completely you can call it selfish, whatever, but I mean, it makes sense. They're like, well, I'm just trying to survive. Yeah. Right. 
um, we are out there. Yes, we kill animals generally way quicker than any of the other predators that are out there. And then we have a quota. <laughs> it's like, hey, yeah. you didn't get your meat? Sorry. Well, uh, you can go to the grocery store well, now. Like just, you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. We have those options. We're obviously we're we're entirely different, but in so many ways we're the same. But we're very much a part of that whole process. Yeah. We are the managers yeah. of the species. Mm-hmm. And and a lot of people that can sit back and say, look at this, look at this, look at this. Let's make these changes. Let's make these changes. You know, we're not going to starve. We can figure out, we can grow food. We can, you know what I mean? There's so many other tools that, that go along with our intellect. That's really the disconnect. Yeah. And it's like, hold on a second. Let's, what are we talking about here? Are we saying we're not a part of this earth and everything that's a, that's on this earth? We're, what are we then? Yeah. What's our place? What's our, our uh, yeah. responsibility. And I, yeah. what I was going to say there is like everything you were just saying, you could immediately, you could also spin that right back around because we did the same things to, you know, we being our ancestors and people that settled in this country, you know, we changed the makeup of, you know, whether it be bison, buffalo, whatever you want to say, all the elk. I mean, there was elk yeah. all over the entire country. I mean, almost the entire country had an elk population. And yep. we went in there, and because there was a value on yeah. on the hide, on the meat, on every, there was a value to it. They hunted it almost to extinction, if not to yep. extinction, and that's yep. awful. And we've learned from that, you know. And that's why there is the the North American model of conservation, and that's great. And I think there's been a great education on that. Um, you know, like platforms like the Meat Eater have talked about it, and people are becoming aware and understanding. I wouldn't know about it. It wasn't something that my father taught me. My dad's, been, he's a lifelong hunter. He grew up in the woods, you know, since he was born in the 60s. But that was yeah. never, like, something that they passed on ingrained. In our generation, we are being educated about this. And then all of a sudden, here we are, we're getting we're getting attacked with these anti-hunting and these missions to stop what we do. It's like, whoa, 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 we've all, we're all now being educated and made aware of, like, why, where we were how we got there and then what we've done to improve it. And then now we're like the bad guys. <laughs> it's like, Oh, whoa, whoa, hold on a second. Like they're, we're not the bad guys here. Like we are on the same team. We're trying to achieve the same thing, a healthy environment and the whole environment, not just, you know, we're talking the whole damn thing, not just the animals, but everything that goes with it. Um, I go to a, last night I go to a, a national deer association seminar and you've got, it was 60 plus people showed up to watch a presentation from um, from a, a top CWD researcher from Cornell University. And that was the first presentation. And the second one was a timber management presentation. And everyone there cares about their deer herd. Those two things go directly together. Uh, CWD and your habitat. And I, sw- you know, like there's, there is a correlation between those things. You need a healthy habitat for that deer population to be healthy. And to see all those people in that room, every one of them cares so much about whether it's the deer on the public land they hunt or the deer on the 40 acres they own behind their house. They care. That's why they're there. They don't go and spend their hard-earned money and their time at those events. And it's like, but when we're all trying to make it better. So, you know, coming back to Howl for Wildlife, it's that we have this platform now that is young. It's like officially a couple months old, but it's a platform where we can all start to come together and understand the power of our voice and the power of what it is that we do as, as outdoor enthusiasts. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. whether you hunt or not, whether you fish or not, this is something, if you're listening to this podcast, like, well, I really don't, I hunt one day a year, but I can, you know, join the website and get alerted when there's something that I can act upon and I can go and click on it, act upon it if I want. And it took me 10 minutes. If that, not even 10 minutes. I mean, I'm doing them I get the emails from you. I jump on there. It takes me a minute. I would probably say it most times it takes me a minute and I don't have to go research who to contact. And it, there's no, there's no extra thought involved. You've done the legwork and you're making it easy for the individual to get engaged and get involved. And that's, I the, keep learning how, how easy it, it really is. Um, it kind of, it surprises me and it tells me, um, you know, <laughs> what was missing the 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 void that we are filling keeps surprising me 
I, I think is, is what I would say. Um, I'm going to look it up right now because I know it, it changes every day here, but let me go back. And by the way, we're not even two months old yet. No. So, so what awesome. was it? Mi- middle of January, you got up and running, right? Yeah. The website and that. Yeah. So this is how easy it has been. Once this refreshes here. I don't know why it's taking so long. Oh, no. I just have to get rid of this. 386,764 emails have been delivered. Oh, my God. Since um, to decision makers. So directly to the people who will be seeing any of these bills or petitions or subjects, whatever it is. That's insane. Okay. Um and I, and I want to be really clear because it's like I, there's a fine line. I'm not, I'm not trying to come down on any of the other orgs. We're, we're offering something completely different. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to work with them. Yes. One of the, the largest orgs, um, certainly, in, in the United States, in the month of January, I think their newsletter said that they sent out 25,000 emails to, through their action center. Okay. So <laughs> we're in a completely different ball game here. It's the setup is completely different. Mm-hmm. Three, whatever it is, I just said 386,000 right. and we're a brand new company. And most people think we're a anti hunting pro wolf <laughs> organization <laughs> still. Right. Right. So yeah, when you break down that barrier, watch out. Yeah. It's just a handful of people that have done this, honestly, yeah. percentage wise of the, of the, of all the sportsmen that are out there, yeah, we haven't reached anything. We're in the point zero whatever percentile. You know what I mean? Yeah. If 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 I just get into single digit percentiles, on yeah, that'll completely blow the doors down on on everything. And then by then, I can actually probably have hopefully somebody in each state, you know, staff. So then you can essentially go to. Um, you'll be able to click on our website and sure you'll be able to see all of all the actions, but if you want to see everything that's going on in your state and make it just as easy, you'll be able to do that too. Hmm. Yeah. Just sort of field that down and narrow that down. Um, there's definitely, you know, lots of plans on, on what that's going to look like if we really expand. And the goal is to always just keep it super easy. Yeah. Like what is it? How for wildlife does, Go to the website. It's all right. It's it's providing a platform. Just making you know. it easy for you to engage yeah. and interact on yeah. hunting related. And, hunting. and if you want to go further, I mean, we have those tools too. If you want to get more involved, we can, we can do that as well. And then the question that has come up, and honestly, at first, I didn't really know. But if we ever get money, you know, like that we can... <laughs> Uh, extra money to spend um, mainstream marketing that hasn't been done before either. Right. You know, um, Super Bowl commercial. Yeah. You know, halftime show sponsored 100%. by Howl for wildlife. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's enough, there is plenty of money in the hunting industry to do this. It's just, how do we organize this and how yeah. do we route that? It's a billion dollar, a multi-billion dollar industry. So the money is not the issue. The people aren't the, you know, numbers aren't the issue at all. Mm-hmm. It's just organizing yeah, and changing a, some of the messaging, the, the way we do it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's the unique, like do what you do best, right? Like these, it goes back to the point I was making about, you know, each one of the organizations, you know, they don't want to necessarily leave, leave their lane. And, you know, you really shouldn't. Like, you should stay focused on what it is that you do. Like, the company I work for, if, you know, we're, like, getting into electric vehicles, we aren't experts on electric as a power source. Like, that's not what we do. So we're going to hire a consultant. We're going to hire another company to handle that for us because that's Mm -hmm. what they do. That's what they specialize in. So, like, I see this no different than that is that Mm. I need the Deer Association. I've found great value in that group and what I've learned and the people I've met and the things that they provide to me, there's great value there. But that like that would be a whole that's a whole nother department for them, which they have advocacy individuals, but they're individuals. Like they can't do it all. They can't keep track of it all and they can't be all over the place. But if they work with 
like I just implore these organizations to like look into working with someone like yourself or with you because you are the one at this point to do this because I think that bringing together a, a central spot for a voice is what's needed. I I cuz I I belong to all these organizations and I just don't know I can't keep track of the eight different directions that things are coming from, but there's all these things that I'm passionate about and one spot. You've made it easy for me, Charles. I mean, I'm I jump in there and it's just like here's what I want to interact with today. And I just get it done and I move on with the rest of my day. And I feel like I've done my part. Yeah. And uh, that's a beautiful thing. That's very good to hear. Cause that's the, it really is. I mean, that's the point, you know, for me, it's like, I look at it every day and I've been building it for so long. I, it's like just saturated in my brain. So I'm like, Hmm, does everybody else, do they come to the website? Does it make sense? I mean, for me, it obviously does. Cause I just know it. Mm-hmm so well right um like all the ins and outs and i'm constantly changing it every day i'm trying to like make it where oh wait when somebody does this it does that so i'm just mapping stuff out and stuff all the time but it's good to hear that, yeah like you know you can go to the website and you can't get lost it's like it's pretty easy yeah i yeah. would say the one thing that if there was a way like you go to the home page and you know you if there was a way and maybe there is now, and this is something you've updated since I was on there earlier this week, but knowing that this issue that's up on the front page that I've already, I know you can go and see what your, your howls are, your activity, but like mm-hmm. if I can see that without having to dive deeper into it, cause I can't remember if I already communicated to that one. Like, I don't want to keep. Well, yeah, that is up there. Um, okay. So number one, you can do the actions more than once. If okay. You want to. However, there is now a user dashboard. And if you go to the user dashboard, you will see a list of all the actions, the same, a list of all the live actions, the same as what's on the action center. And if you have submitted your, you know, if you've sent your emails, they'll be darkened out and unclickable. Okay. So it's on the user dash. Okay. However, it's not a, I'm deciding, I don't know if I'm going to go this route. You don't have to log in to go to the website. So that's why we have an action center where it's just open because then anybody can go there without logging in, without ever, you know, signing up essentially, and they can take action. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you go to your user dashboard, you'll see, um, you'll see what actions you haven't taken a part in. If, if there are any, yeah, you just won't be able to click on it. Okay. Yeah. So you're, and yep. you're just, you know, you're just, you're always working in this thing. And, it, and like you said, it hasn't even been two months yet. So yeah, I yeah. mean, the, the, it's cool to see and, and hear that you're on the move making some of these adjustments and changes to make it easier. Yeah. So once there's an app, mm. it'll just, I think it'll just be personalized to you and you can go to like that version or you can go to like, you know, the full version if you want to see everything. Cause again, you can, you can, resubmit emails um because there'll be a different email or yep. you can write a different email or whatever if you want i mean that's i don't know whatever but um but definitely no uh, after like the first week or so or something some people were were emailing me like this is getting confusing i don't know if i've done it yet <laughs> i'm like i mean all right come on just yeah. give me a break i'm one guy over here trying to figure yes. all this out yeah yeah, so I'm like, all right, I think I can do it with tags and I can create a user dashboard. And it's, it's as long as you use the same, as long as you're logged in, I can tell what you've done. Yeah. Because you're getting points for it on one end. So we'll just, we'll just tag it and, and make it do something else if you've already done it. So that's, that's what the user dashboard is. Yeah, cool. Well, I think we've done a, a, a pretty good job of kind of talking about, you know, why you're doing this and how it works. And, and, um, if you want to just give a quick rundown on the website and how people can get signed up, you know, what the, is there a cost? Is there not a cost? How that all works and what some of the benefits are as well um, mm-hmm. that you guys continue to add uh, benefits yeah. on. So run so, the, run that through. Yeah. So the website is howlforwildlife.org. Uh, if you sign up, you click on join the pack and it's basically creating a, a username and password. So just your email address and password. The reason why you would want to do that is, I guess, a couple of reasons. You'll get emails with new action alerts with anything that's important like that. And those emails are hopefully pretty simple. It's like, here's a new action. Click the first thing you see, and it's going to take you to the page. So, you know, 
and I'm not trying to write a bunch of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you have to read through or anything. Um, but also the website is gamified. So for as long as you are logged in, every action you take, every share you make, every everything you basically do on there, if you if you make a share and somebody sees that on a social media platform and they sign up as a result, you also get points for that. So you can also be a recruiter. Mm-hmm. So there's a point there's a point value assigned to each thing that you do. You don't have to think about that any further than gaining those points. When you reach a threshold of say 100 points, you get automatically entered into a contest to win to win such things as a Stone Glacier backpack or a Tacticam 5.0 or whatever. And you'll just get an email one day that says, "Hey, good job." You just won this. Nice. Here, here's the person to talk to at this company. They're going to send it to your house. That's outstanding. Right? Yeah. And then the other part of the rewards is just basically for signing up, for taking any action that opens up a discount code page for you, which now I've switched it because it's it's growing too much where it was in like the after action emails and there would just be a list of all these codes. Mm -hmm. Now it's just a link you click on and it takes you to a page that you have to be signed in on, which means you had to have taken action and you'll see the full list of, of discount codes. And it's anywhere from 10 to 25% off of um, just different industry partners, Um, black rifle coffee company, um, Eastman's hunt journals, um, Eastman's, uh, What's their tag thing? God, they're gonna kill me. But the 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 app that they have. Yeah, I forget know, the, what it's called too. Yeah, um, but I've heard of it. I but I'd... a bunch of different partners on there, and it's basically just um, it's either a code or it's a clickable link where the code auto populates in your shopping cart. So if you buy something off that website, you know. So and that and it's for doing nothing, and there's no cost at all. Um, we will have a cost. We will have a membership level, which is going to get you some really amazing stuff. Um, it'll enter you into like, if you want to be entered into like free hunts and, you know, five day hunts or whatnot, or if you, you know, buy our membership, it also gets you a membership to a really, really sweet other organization that I'm not going to mention right now. That Mm -hmm. is really awesome. Um, so not a, not like a nonprofit organization. I mean, like a uh, business. Whatever. Or, I won't get. I won't yeah. get into it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's, yeah. I don't want to dig on you. Yes. No. Well, we're we, we're we're working on a lot of really cool stuff just to you know to to really get this out there and because it's it's what it's going to take. I mean, we need you know it's it's advertising, it's marketing. We're not going to be solely sponsored by anything ever. The idea is to have as many. Um, is just to have full support of the hunting community, the brands, the talking heads, all of them being like, yo, we can be on the same page here, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So if you see five different backpacking companies, that's success. Yeah. That Cause they don't care work. that, that they're comp, yeah. their competitors. They want that we're all working yeah. towards the same goal, which is a beautiful yeah. thing. Yeah. So that's it. So it's all for wildlife.org. Um, the website is, that's the website. Um, Instagram is uh howl underscore org. I'm pretty sure you can type in Hall for Wildlife too, and that'll that'll pop up. But mm-hmm. I just didn't. It kind of looks long, you know, or whatever. So I just made it a simpler version of that. And uh, that's it. I mean, we're on Facebook too, but it's just a repeat of what happens on Instagram, essentially. So yep. just get yeah. shared over there. Yep. Sweet. I've I'm been, I'm very happy we had this discussion, and uh, and happy to see it growing as quickly as it is for you, and and. Uh, I know I can speak for myself, but I can speak for a lot of our listeners, you know, whatever we can do to, you know, spread the word and we will continue to, you know, I'll share the stuff on Instagram and, and the things you guys are doing are great. And it seems like a couple wins recently, like very recently that you were posting, um, that was there a vote last night or yesterday in Georgia. Is that correct? Yeah. So that moves on to the Senate now, but the house passed at 162 to zero Yeah, and the, the chair, well, the guy that was speaking about it, he, he specifically brought up the emails and he's like, well, we now know how the hunters feel, which made me feel great because that was, no, we, we sent the majority of emails for yeah. sure. I actually, on that specific bill, 
we have over 190,000 emails that reached just on that bill wow. that reached those decision makers. Yeah. So that's a lot. Now you should be proud of that. And, you know, I am. personally, thank you for what you're doing because it's, it's what, it's what the, uh, the outdoors needed. It's what hunters needed collectively was somebody to step up and, and start doing this. So you're doing God's work and uh, we all appreciate you for what you're doing there. And, you know, we're behind you. You know, we want to, we want to help, you know, see this continue to grow. And I think it's a, a beautiful yeah. thing, a beautiful direction for us all to be going in. Oh, thank you. It's the success is up to you. We ain't, we're not sending the emails. Yeah. We're not doing, we're not, it's, we have the vehicle and you need to jump in and drive it. It's awesome. That's it. Yeah. It's up to you. So it's good stuff. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Charlie. And we'll, we'll definitely, uh, I, you know, you're welcome to get back on here. Things are changing rapidly. So maybe we'll get yep. back, get back together again later this year and see how things are going. If there's any new developments or anything, uh, further that, uh, we want to chat about. So for sure. Appreciate you, man. Awesome. Thank you for what you're doing and, uh, keep howling. Thank you. Talk right. to you later. Call me anytime. Yeah, I will do that for sure. All right. All right. See you, man. Thanks. Bye-bye. See ya.